Now the next topic is EMR and redshift. Now what is EMR and why we should use it? So first of all you have to understand how your data is uh, created and what is the requirement. So just let me know in the real world when you mine anything in from the uh, this is a mountain okay or there is a mine where you dig for the gold when you dig a gold from a mine are you going to get the pure gold or it is a mixture of of different element and you have to extract the gold from that so this is a, a mountain where you are digging for a gold there are some time when you will get exactly the raw gold but most of the time you have to uh, process that gold process the element which you are extracting and fa fetch the gold from that agree in real world it is very less chances that you will get the pure gold before creating the ornaments you have to process the gold similarly when a data is created from the machine let's say this is a machine okay or let's say you have a car Te like tesla car it's a smart car this car is generating generating a data your mobile is generating the data which type of data is mo your mobile generating your location okay nowadays you are ordering food on your zomato zomato collects the data what type of uh, uh, food preference you have so any data coming from the machines IoT device so data is generated continuously we call it raw data we call call it raw data now sometime you can directly use raw data as your final data okay but it's not always the scenario well where you can use raw data as final data you have to massage the data you have to clean the data you have to convert the data and as per your requirement you have to modify the data and then the final data will be created just like uh, the gold extraction now in a L when you are digging you don't want to extract the gold you okay or you are extracting the gold but ap uh, apart from gold there are other elements as well which are created just like uh, aluminium or silver but your primary focus is on gold but other elements are also important and it is created and you can sell them so similarly when the uh, uh, raw data is created there can be chances that from the raw data you can create multiple outputs okay so this is important to understand that the raw data can be used to create multiple outputs and it it can be used in different sources right just like in car the car the car the tesla car it is creating so much data now according to the your use case the data can be used so if it's the data regarding the engine so that will be used by the company to optimize the performance of the engine but the gps location of your car will be used to understand what geographical area you are uh, right now uh, how frequently you are recharging your car and uh, how much distance you have to travel to recharge your car and so on so a single data can be used in multiple location to analyze it in the future right it is called final data but you have to clean you have to convert you have to massage your data before you call it as a final or usable data agree now most of the time the final data are put in databases just like rds we have right now under we have learned DynamoDB and in the future right now we are going to learn Redshift but before that this cleaning part is very important cleaning and converting so this is your life cycle of your data okay so plan and collect 
you plan and then start collecting your data then you process it con convert it clean it and then you analyze the data just like what is your food preference Zomato collects your data and they enable the uh, and they do analysis of your data that a particular client uh, what is their food preference accordingly nowadays they are giving you suggestions then preserve share and reuse so you know Zomato's are using your data to share with different companies like uh, McDonald's Burger King so let's say you are uh, in Pune and uh, McDonald's wants to set up a new branch a new outlook so what they do they, they go to uh, Zomato and they analyze in, in a given area how, what is the demand should I open the outlet or not so the, Zomato shares that data and reuse this is a life cycle of your data similarly data life cycle here same so you can see understanding the business data mining you fetch the data data cleaning data exploration then you feature engineer your data then predict the data so if it's a stock market okay it's cricket data so many of you might have seen you from the past performance of a uh, any player you want to predict that a player will how well they will do that's a prediction stock market prediction weather prediction okay you create a visualization if you this of data regarding to stock market you can create a graph weather information you can create graphs predictions this is a life cycle of your data so just understand <coughs> data regarding a weather weather reports how much data is there for weather for last 10 years 20 years it will be in terabytes of data stock market there will be terabytes of data available right but if your company wants to start give some feedback on the basis of data where you're doing some prediction you're doing some model uh, data visualization then you require you need to process this huge amount of data okay so for that that's coming comes a uh, EMR comes in the picture what is EMR EMR is basically collection of EC2 machine working together as a group okay as a team EMR is a collection of EC2 machine working together as a group so they will do your data processing they will clean your data they will uh, uh, massage your data and then you can use it for your further analysis okay so the most important part of cleaning is I can give an example right now your data is generating a date in D D M M or Y Y Y Y format and you require your data in MM D D and yy format so this is basically converting your data the date is one of the important thing which is pro creating a problem in the industry that which format should we use data data is generating in this format date is generated in this format but your system your output your consumer your client require data in this format second is currency okay currency of your currency in your data so if you are using this data for us client they will require currency in dollar but same data is used by if european client same data if you are feeding to european client it should be in euro if it's for indian customer it should be in rupees so this conversion you have to do so basically cleaning massaging or any processing on your data is done on EMR it's a group of EC2 machine working together to achieve a common task so EMR elastic map reduce big data you might have heard in the industry big data so this is a tool for big data so EMR is 
the industry leading cloud big data platform big data and use for processing vast amount of data so in your exam in your interview if you heard this word processing the data or big big data platform in the cloud then just remember it's we are talking about emr okay so vast big data uh, vast amount of data using open source tool just like apache spark hive edge base flink or hoodie these are the tools open source tools available in the market which is using big data with emr you can run petabyte scale analytic analysis at half the uh, less than the half the cost of traditional on premise solution and over three times faster than the standard spark <laughs> the central component of emr is called cluster the cluster is a collection of ec2 machines each instance in the cluster is called node each node has a role within the cluster uh, it is referred as node type the emr also install different software on each node giving each node a role to distribute in the application in the hadoop so we'll talk about what is the node so this is the diagram of emr so you can see there is one ec2 machine is this this is master ec2 machine this is slave or other ec2 machine so how the architecture is designed how the cluster is created it's just like a team there will be a team lead or master and other will be a uh, team member or subordinates so the master or the team lead will give the instruction to the team that perform this task so all the requests will go to the master master will understand what is the task what is the request and accordingly it will distribute the work to different nodes or ec2 machine so if, this is called cluster group of ec2 machine working together it is called cluster and we call them nodes not ec2 machine we call them nodes okay so each node has its own task you can configure cluster to periodically archive the logs stored in from master to s3 so what are whatever the system logs are generated you can store them in s3 bucket this ensure the logs are available if the cluster is terminated where the uh, whether the uh, cluster is shut down normally or due to error so basically system logs okay emr archive the log files to s3 every 5 minutes okay now information about cluster so there is a master node a node that manage the cluster the master node tracks the status and monitor the health of your cluster every cluster has a master node so what is the task of master node to manage the task and monitor the health of the cluster core node okay the node with the software component that run the task and store the hadoop file system so this is the important part this is a worker of your cluster and this is the heart of your cluster so in the core node basically it's a ec2 machine which runs the task okay the the multi node cluster has more than one core task node this is the optional node this is optional node the node with the software component that only run the task does not store the data so here there is no data store but in the core node the data will be stored so you can see the cluster so master node is connected with each node now same diagram there is a master it is connected to different different ec2 machines okay the difference between core node and the task node is that in the core node the data is also stored in the task node there is no data data is bring on the fly when you are doing the task then only the data will be available otherwise there is no data stored in the task node okay so again 
is AMR a free tire coming in free tire? So answer is no. AMR doesn't come in free tire. I think nowadays they are uh, they have given some free tire permission. So you can go to EMR. Okay. EMR create a cluster so you can see again the configurations of the cluster EMR version you can give the name to the cluster now software bundle what software do you want to install on your cluster then group now this is the configuration of your master node and the slave you can see the primary the master node what type of machine do you want so you won't find t2 t2 micro so these are the heavy machines that's why this doesn't come in free tire okay so you can see there are high level machines are there okay m5 x large with 16 gb memory and 4 core the price is Point two dollar per hour. This is a master node. Similarly, you have a slave node or core node. Okay. Task node, if required, you can get it. Okay. Node configuration. I don't want to do node configuration. Now here is basically how many slave nodes or how many worker do you want? Right now if I select one so there will be one master and one core node but if you want multi core one two three four so you can increase the capacity so four plus one master plus four core if you don't require a task node just uh, remove the instance group okay you can enable spot instance as well this is in vpc you can enable the vpc now termination met methodology you can decide the termination methodology you can pass some script to your data emr and that's it i am role some security and you can create the cluster okay now remember this is a chargeable service EMR is a chargeable service okay and you can see some warnings okay you can now create the cluster but remember it is a chargeable service and the GUI keeps on changing so if I go here there is no option for going to previous version okay so the cluster will be created and you can connect to the master node you can connect to the master node just like you're connecting to EC2 machine again it's a EC2 machine so you can uh, SSH you can use putty to connect to the master node and you can give the instruction that read the file from S3 and do the processing of the file so for that you you should you should uh, learn big data how the big data is working okay but EMR is used for processing the vast amount of data the next part is redshift before that anybody has any question any question redshift okay so what is redshift so we have talked about red, redshift a little before while run, uh, learning about rds so what is redshift redshift is again a database redshift is again a database but it is quite different from rds so i have talked about oltp and olap so ol TP basically it's a simple database which is reading and writing the data 
but you if you want to analyze a huge amount of data o l a p where you are using last 10 years data together and doing some analysis right so in this case you require a heavy database so redshift is a fast powerful fully managed petabyte scale data warehouse service in the cloud it is called data warehouse okay what is data warehouse processing or analyzing the large amount of data that is called data warehouse so if you find a word called data warehouse just click redshift so customer can start with a just small 0.25 dollar per hour with no commitment or no upfront payment and scale up to petabyte or more for thousand dollar per terabyte per year less than one tenth of the most data warehouse solution in the world so amazon claims that the cost of redshift is one tenth of any data warehouse in the world so data warehousing database are different from architecture both from data perspective and infra layer always remember data warehouse is different type of database you can just compare this as a sports car versus normal car normal car rds sports car data warehousing okay so oltp transactions wherever you find uh, analytical word analysis okay if you find a word called analysis just click on ol ap that is redshift so revenue of a company country wise covid vaccine done on a daily basis in a given country so you can imagine how much records were there stock price for last 10 years analyzing the stock price from last 10 years climate change of a city country state country for last 10 20 50 years number of flights landed in mumbai in the month of december so much data okay if you want to analyze this type of data you have to have huge database number of flights departure from india in 2020 2000 to 2020 year wise state wise country wise uh, city wise and so on okay so if you have a requirement where you have to analyze the huge amount of data you should use redshift okay now for quickly we will understand the concept of redshift so what is redshift basic redshift come in two flavors single node and multi node okay so single node basically means only one machine underline there will be only one machine one ec2 machine which we are not managing that will be managed by amazon multi node similar to emr there will be a master or leader node and there will be a, a group of machine working together that is called multi node so same architecture as emr here there will be a multi node so manage client connection and receive the queries compute node store data and perform queries up to 128 nodes you can attach up to 128 nodes in emr why emr is recommended in market it is having a massive parallel processing amazon redshift automatically distribute the data and query the whatever the query you are doing whatever the task you are pa passing to emr it is distributing all the tasks to all the nodes the so query load across multiple nodes so it's a parallel processing redshift make it easy to add nodes to your data warehouse and enable you to maintain fast query performance as your data grows as your data is growing amazon uh, redshift will maintain the performance now one of the important part of redshift is how the data is stored so just let me know in your file in a in your file how the data is stored this is one record this is second line this is third line and so on this is your table your data is stored line by line in your hard disk 
right record by record so in general the data is stored in a row oriented format means line by line row stored sequentially in the file rows are stored sequentially in the file okay because of this if you want to just fetch the age average age in your country so you have to read all the records together first of all you have to go each and every record and fetch this column or if you want to get the sale report just one column still you have to read all the files all the records and it is a slow process but in redshift what redshift does redshift instead of storing your data record by record instead of that it is splitting the data in a column format you can see in the below redshift splits the data into column and store record of this column in one file this is in another file this this column in third file and so on okay now if you want an average of your country now this average column is in single file you don't have to uh, read more data only the information is required is there in the single file so your processing becomes faster okay and second thing is compression now in this case you can see it is integer string 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 number 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 so integer and text and integer are stored together so compression is not that much high but here in a single file all are integers all are numbers here all are string so same type of information is stored in a single file that means all are text or all are number so the compression will be higher because same data type is stored same type of information is stored so that's why redshift has a advanced compressions so how redshift stores the data into columnar data columnar data store can be compressed much more than row based storage because similar data is stored sequentially in the disk as i said same type of data is in the file next amazon redshift employs multiple compression techniques and can often achieve significant compression relative to traditional data storage in addition redshift does not require index or materialization view so it uses less space as compared to traditional database when loading the data in an empty table redshift automatically samples your data and select most appropriate compression scheme these are the advantage of redshift so these are all property which you have to just read and before going to exam so this is another example so if your data is stored as a row so you can see this is india chocolate a country product sale india chocolate 1000 india ice cream 2000 germany chocolate 4000 us noodles 500 how it is stored like this india chocolate 1000 india ice cream 2000 in this format the data is stored in your file but in redshift this column is stored together this columns are stored together this columns are stored together and it it becomes much much faster for processing the data okay now backup similar to any database uh, same technique so backup are unable retention of 35 days redshift always attempt to maintain at least three copy of of your data the original data a backup in uh, uh, compute node and a an s3 okay 
so there is there is three copy of your data in redshift and um, uh, redshift can asynchronously replicate your snapshot to s3 and in an another region for disaster recovery so again you can enable the uh, you can create a snapshot of your database okay so same thing as rds and your uh, dynamo db then redshift pricing so basically redshift is price per ec2 machine per hour basis so compute node uh, compute node hours total number of hours you run across all your compute node for the billing purpose you are billed for one unit per node per hour okay so three nodes in your cluster running for entire one month will occur three node multiplied 24 hours multiplied 13 days so two one six nodes if you have a cluster if you have redshift with three nodes one two three this is master node so there is no charge for the master node you will be charged for the uh, core node basically slave nodes so if you are running this no cluster for 30 days 24 cross 24 hours so what is will be the charges total number of hours is 216 so that is 216 hours 2160 hours total only compute node will be charged no master node there is no charges for master node okay uh, security encryption ssl certificate kms to you can enable kms by default redshift manages your kms so your data is encrypted by default in redshift okay redshift currently working on a single ability zone not multiple ability zone redshift only available in single ability zone because all the nodes should be in a single ability zone you can store the data uh, you can restore the snapshot to new ability zone in the event of outage so for exam tips for exam tip So what are the exam tips for EMR? EMR is an industry leading cloud big data platform for processing vast amount of data using open source tools. Cluster is a collection of EC2 machine. Each instance in the cluster is called node. There is a master node, node that manages the cluster. The node tracks the status of the task and monitor the health of your cluster. okay core node or worker node a node with the software component that runs and stores the data in the cluster this is basically runs the task and stores the data task node basically just run the task and does not store the data Redshift. Redshift is a business intelligent tool. Okay, it is a data warehouse in the cloud. Okay, so if you want to analyze a large amount of data, you should use Redshift. Back backups by default backups are enabled in Redshift with minimum retention period of one day up to maximum thirty five days. Redshift always attempt to maintain at least three copy of your data. Redshift can can asynchronously replicate your snapshot in different in S3 for disaster recovery. These are the properties of Redshift. Again, Redshift is a chargeable service in the cloud, but you can create 
if you want you can try it out but it is a chargeable service because it's a cluster collection of EC2 machine okay so you can see cluster go to cluster create a cluster just like EC2 machine or any other uh, database you can just name the cluster you can see the EC2 machine underline EC2 machines this is our family with a very huge CPU okay uh, 12 CPU 128 terabyte of data you can store here cluster of two nodes so approximately monthly charge will be five thousand dollars let can have a small one t2 yep so if i am selecting this node dc dc too large then 500 rupees uh, 500 dollar per month is the charge estimated charge okay so look for a free trial try redshift serverless you will receive 300 dollar for using okay they are giving some uh, free trials if you are opting for a uh, credit you can check it out if it's available redshift free uh, serverless new service they have launched okay but again be cautious while creating the cluster you might get charged okay always remember what is the charge you are getting for your cluster any question on redshift or EMR okay we have uh, one ppt it will take 15-20 uh, minutes should we complete it today or do you want it to co cover it on monday it's a simple service it will take hardly 10 minutes then your RDS will be completed. Shall we complete RDS? It will take hardly 10 to 15 minutes. Okay. So uh, let me com complete. So elastic cache. What is elastic cache? So to increase the performance of your database or to improve the performance of your website we have seen that we are caching the data into your aid location we have used CloudFront it is used for data okay for but for database for database we have to use el elastic cache in the cloud so elastic cache is a web service that make it easy to deploy operate and in mem uh, scale and in memory cache in the cloud the service improves the performance of a web application by allowing you to retrieve the information from fast manage in memory cache instead of uh, railing entirely on the slow hard disk database so elastic cache is used for database to cache the data okay it is used for database and it caches the data Elastic cache comes in two flavor. One is uh, memcached and other is reddish. Okay, so it is used to store the frequently accessed data. Okay, now what is mean by frequently accessed data? Now take an example. Nowadays uh, IPL is going on. In IPL, people are searching which is the best team which is the best cricketer what is the performance of the best cricketer what is the scorecard who is going to be there in the final so this information is constant and many people are 
fetching the same information again and again what is the performance of kohli what is the performance of dhoni this information is constant and if hundreds of people are fetching the same information from the database then the database stress will increase the performance will decrease so if you find you as a de developer if you find out that the same type of query is executing again and again and getting the same result so instead of directly hitting the database you should enable the elastic cache so that this type of query can be delivered from the cache and your stress on the database will be reduced okay so oscar was going on previously so which is the best movie is given by in the oscar okay and so on so these are the uh, information are stored in database and output is same so elastic cache comes in two flavor memcached and redis so for simple cache mechanism you should use uh, memcached it's simple it's cheap so great for basic object caching scale horizontally but there is no data persistency no multi z or no failover in cache a good choice if you want a basic cache mechanism and you want your cache model to be as simple as possible redis it's, it is used for complex output queries more sophisticated solution with enterprise features okay this is used in enterprise like persistency of your cache replication of your cache multi z and failover mechanism are available it support sorting and ranking of your data just like gaming dashboard uh, scorecards complex data like list and hash keys okay so if you want to go in enterprise version you should go with the redis it is more sophisticated it is costlier it is chargeable service again and uh, it is has more features like data persistency and failover mechanism which is not there in the uh, memcached it's a simple mechanism uh, cache mechanism scenarios when you should use cache and when you should not so uh, database is under stress this is an exam question again database is under stress find a solution elastic cache is good choice if your database is particular read heavy so in your question if you are able to figure out your database is read heavy so you should go with the elastic cache and your data is not frequently changing right cache will not help if you are read heavy agree cache will not have help uh, if your database is read uh, sorry if your database is heavy writing okay so you may lead to scale up your database so you need to increase the capacity of your database if you are writing more than reading then you should increase the capacity of your database cache will not help you if in the question you uh, it is your client is performing OLAP they are doing analytics so if your database is feeling stressed because you are performing uh, analytical processing switch to redshift don't use RDS okay this is the recommendations okay simple so again it's a chargeable service elastic cache you have to set up the cluster you have to uh, attach to your database but for exam for interview just understand it's a cache mechanism in, uh, in memory cache to increase the performance of your database okay now you can see there is a redis cluster there is a memcached cluster okay and charges are written not here so if you create a cluster you can see the again there is a underlying machines are running for caching and you have to 
give the charges accordingly okay so i'm not showing you how to create this cluster okay for exam point of view just remember the th the property now the last service in your rds is data migration service so simplicity i will just give you an example if your client is working on on premise and they need to migrate your database to cloud so what they have to do this is on on premise system this is your cloud right assume that you are running mysql simple database mysql or oracle database on on premise so what you have to do if you want to migrate to cloud in industry there are many companies who are still working on data migration right in industry the companies want to migrate to cloud so what is the approach the basic approach is there are tables your database is here create a same database here same table same metadata everything here now copy the data from on premise to s3 bucket now you have to copy the data move the data to cloud s3 bucket and from s3 push it to your database it can be rds it can be redshift it can be dynamodb so from on premise copy or create tables and copy the data to s3 and from s3 to the database this is what um, industry even i have done this thing it used to take huge amount of time and man hour so for that amazon has created a service called data migration service what it does it automate your migration from on premise to cloud in the case of database if you are migrating the database from on premise to cloud use this service directly it is a cloud service that make it easy to migrate relational database data warehouse no sql database or any other type of data storage into cloud you can use dms to migrate your data into aws between on premise or between the cloud as well so if you have a cloud let's say you are using azure and you, you want to migrate to amazon you can use data migration service dms is a server in aws that run replication software so you create a source and target connection so you create a target and source connection to tell dms where to extract the load from and to okay then you schedule a task that run this service to migrate your data so basically what happens this is your source database it can be on premise it can be other cloud okay you have, you have to configure the source key from where you have to pull the data then a server will start up a machine will start automatically it can be ec2 machine okay it is configured by amazon what it will do it will start pulling the data it will start pulling the data on the second side it will create a database for you either you create a database or even dms service can create a database according to source data according to source database it will create a database in the cloud and it will start copying your data it is called data migration service so dms create table and associate primary key if they does not exist in the target agar target mein there is no database it will create automatically you can pre create the target table manually or you can run schema conversion tool or to create some or all target tables either app bana dijiye you can create the table or amazon uh, dms will create automatically so there are two type of migration one is homogeneous where on premise database is same as cloud so you can see on premise may there is oracle database in cloud it is also you are using oracle this is called homogeneous both side is same okay so source database and the destination database is same then there is a heterogeneous migration where on 
uh, on premise it's mysql in cloud you are using aurora so there is a change in the database so source and target database are different just like source is rds and target is aurora so within the cloud also you are migrating today you are, you might be using a rds machine and you want to migrate to aurora then also you have to use uh, you can use data migration service so this is a list of target uh, source on premise oracle mysql postgres maria db no, mongo db sql server okay even you you have rds as a source aurora as a source s3 bucket as a source okay even third party azure can be your source okay target again target can be mysql uh, maria db rds instance redshift dynamo db elastic cache kinesis this can be different targets okay same diagram again oracle to oracle mysql to aurora okay now there might be scenarios in homogeneous mostly the table structure might be same okay but in heterogeneous here you might to convert some information right in mysql there are some property might be different as compared to aurora so that's where a schema generation tool will help you out schema conversion tool this is again a tool which will help you to migrate your database uh, flawlessly so for exam purpose elastic cache is in, in, in memory cache that will improve the performance of your database it consists of two it comes in two flavor memcached and and uh, redis memcached in memory key value data uh, storage object cache is primary goal you want to keep sim things as simple as possible no data persistency no availability zone uh, it does not support advanced data sorting and data type redis it's a advanced cache mechanism the performance of uh, it perform data sorting ranking such as gaming dashboards advanced data type such as list and hash map data persistency multi z or also supported okay dms service allow you to migrate your database from on premise to cloud or one source to aws source can be either on premise inside aws itself or it can be other cloud provider just like azure you can do homogeneous migration or heterogeneous migration if you want if you are doing a heterogeneous migration you might need to convert the data structure that's where schema conversion tool required so basically sometime your data source and dest destination database are not compatible you need to make them compatible so you need to attach a tool which is again provided by amazon that's it here we are ending your rds relational database